our tendency to trust the vision is much less universal than we usually think. The historical anthropology of senses tells us that the visual way of perceiving the world has not always been dominant everywhere. This exhibition project Atano, the haptic eye and non-visual perception, studies the reduction of vision in the history of art and tries to revise the hierarchy of senses by the ability to transmit an aesthetic or conceptual message. My name is Evgenia Zhenia Kislova of Levbach, and I invite you to walk through the exhibition curated in the Pushkin Museum of Fine Arts in Moscow. We will start here from the exhibition poster with famous biblical parable of the blind leading by the blind, with engraving of Gabriel Smith after Tintoretto's painting. Many years after Smith and Tintoretto, blindness is still frightening. Doubt about our ability to see anything objectively makes blindness a universal metaphor for all of us. What meanings receive vision loss after Bruegel, Smith and Tintoretto? This project explores the reduction of vision in art history and the relationship between visual and non-visual perception. Let's start. The vision reduction experience here begins with the three-color landscape of classicism. In the work of French artist Claude Lorraine, we see the ideal landscape presenting a harmonious combination of colors. This combination is based on three dominant tints tree color of classicism, blue, green and brown. Brown forms the foreground, blue, green the middle ground, and the light blue the background. A three color formula of classicism actually means that the diverse palette of the world is reduced to this harmonious combination. Near Lorenz landscape the viewer is invited to look through optical filters into the window offering the view to Valhonka Street and the ruins of the former Galitsyn estate, which is now part of the museum quarter of the Pushkin Museum of Fine Art. The artists of 18th and 19th centuries used such optical filters to paint landscapes a la Claude Lorraine. Another optical tool, the black mirror, helped artists to build the composition and to reduce colors for drawing landscape. Painting appears as a process of vision control, including manipulations of the natural color palette and the use of technical means such as colored glass, black mirror, camera obscura, camera lucida, etc., etc., etc. When we move from light to dark, we discover stained glass windows. The connection between the eye and the light is most intensively manifested in the Western European small stained glass windows. According to Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, these younger relatives of this temple stained glass captivate the eyes and elevate the spirit. Here it's time to remember that the temple is a Gesamtkunstwerk, where the body participates in perception no less than the gaze. A smaller version of the temple stained glass creates the illusion of a world subject to man. The chamber format means readiness for home use and control over light and dark, visibility and invisibility. Besides, we can compare the optic vision and the haptic vision when the stained glass windows immerse into darkness. According to Aristotle, if sight is light and intelligence, then its loss is darkness and ignorance. In European classical art, blindness has occupied a central place among all the allegories of human short-sightedness and narrow-mindedness. Such attitude towards blindness was dominant until the Age of Enlightenment. In his letter on the blind for the use of those who can see, Denis de Trot for the first time describes a blind person not as a subject of suffering, but of a unique experience. The exclusivity achieved by a deprivation makes these people frequent characters in figurative art. Images of a blind writer, a blind musician and the blind poet Semi Maro, who played for demons, presented at the exhibition at Anoa illustrates this archetype. The idea of the extraordinary abilities of vision-impaired people, including the gift of divination, incredible memory or musical talents, is developed in the romantic concept of an outcast, a hero with a mysterious life experience excluded by society. It looks like the romanticization of blindness is on the side of the long-standing stigma of visual-impaired people and a part of the process of social rethinking of this image. Atano is the first exhibition at Pushkin Museum, working with the representation of this problem. In the early works of Pablo Picasso, this theme received enormous metaphorical representation. In the works of the Blue Period, he rationalized blindness as the spectrum of loneliness visible for the outside. During different periods of his life, artists returned to this image. Pablo Picasso was known to have an acute fear of going blind and often invoked the image of blindness in his thoughts, works and words. 
criticism of vision and as a result the idea of up and down in visual perception in favor of haptic sense becomes an artistic gesture, an expression of the desire for the opposite. Picasso's idea of depicting objects not the way I see them, but the way I think about them, became a statement of his own vision and a powerful impulse for other artistic experiments. In the year 1999, philosopher Jacques Derrida curates an exhibition in Museum de Louvre and published a book entitled Memoirs of the Blind, The Self-Portrait and Other Ruins. He writes there, The operation of drawing would have something to do with blindness. Expressing his thoughts in paradoxes, Derrida says that the artist reinvents drawing every time from scratch. At the beginning of the film The Secret of Picasso, director Henri Roche Courceau supports this idea. The artist orients himself in space like a blind man. In the pitch darkness of a blank canvas, he advanced with the help of his touch. In a series of illustrations by Pablo Picasso for Andre de Balzac novel, The Unknown Masterpiece, published by Ambrose Vallar in 1931, the invisibility of art and the blindness of the viewer became a central theme. The protagonist of The Unknown Masterpiece, the painter Frenhofer, who spent a decade creating an artwork and putting all his skills in, presented according to the audience only a chaos of colors, tones and indefined shades forming a kind of fuzzy nebula. Three quarters of a century before the advent of non-objective art, Balzac working with the eternal dialogue between the idea and embodiment created a metaphor of the infinite creative pursuit and the impossibility of connection between the artist and viewer's perception. The desire to see something beyond the vision was common to many artists in the 20th century. The immersive and multisensory art of contemporaneity looks like a dream of avant-garde artists come true. The Japanese artist Johanny Simoa suggests the equality of different ways of art perception – tactile, visual, geomo, olfactory and many others. A virtuoso ceramist, Nishimura used traditional ceramic techniques to create the conceptual art. The turning point of his life he considers the episode when he accompanied a visual impaired girl in the sculpture garden. The girl pressed her cheek against the sculpture of Isamu Naguchi son at midnight and said, When I hug the sculpture, I see myself through its eyes. This experience brought Nishimura to use all senses in his works. Exclusively for the exhibition at the Pushkin Museum, Uhe Nishimura created three sculptures to hug from raw clay using the traditional bend and wire technique. Each of these artworks suggests to combine touch perception with some other sensation. The round voice produced a barely perceptible sound, the clay light spreads a subtitle warm, and the conversation communicates with the viewer through an olfactory cord with the help of an aroma created by Maria Ushakova, a visually impaired perfumer at Pure Sense Studio. She explained her work so. The scent of the conversation sculpture is weightless and a bit raw and chuggy. It combines cool, earthy moisture with the soft warmth of juniper and cedar. The exhibition at the Fushki Museum presents also five objects from the Fired Books series, Imperial Room, two fashion magazines, Koji Yen and Random House Dictionaries, and a miniature Eugene Anegin. The creation of the unusual sculptures resembles alchemy. The artist takes books and magazines found on the street, which he then covers with liquid clay and burns in a ceramic kiln. It is impossible to predict how the book will open during heat treatment and what forms the sculpture will take. Their objects are incredibly diverse in appearance and completely different when sensed tactilely, which cause an infinite number of interpretations in people who perceive them through touch. As in the case of multisensory sculptures, we are dealing not with a reduction, but with a significant change of visual perception, because the idea of form changes when the look and touch at the same time. The artist doesn't know what he's doing, said Marcel Duchamp in 1917. He worked that time as an editor and chef at the Dada magazine Blind Man. The viewer is the creator of art, said he. In the 20th century art, criticism of vision and the resulting idea of abandoning visual perception became an artistic manifesto. So-called blind drawing emerged, meaning that the artist worked with his or her eyes closed or in a completely dark room. This practice has been employed, for example, by the Austrian 
Ein Artist war nur feiner. The German Artist Hans Hartung und Hans Richter. And the Russian Artist Joseph Kinsburg und Julie Albert. Conceptual art itself is a critique of visuality. It transfers the content of the art piece from the visual to the textual. The practice of including olfactory, acoustic and kinesthetic sensation in art works owes much to the artistic experiments and manifestos of the early 20th century. An artist, composer and theorist of the Russian avant-garde, Mikhail Matyushin, developed situations or states that were supposed to lead to a new vision, a fundamentally new way of looking, a reduction of all excessive details and expansion of new artistic vision in its organic dimensions. The phenomenal world, according to Matyushin, is the periphery of the earth which appears before the eyes as the true, authentic, deep world, the ultimate reality. Matushin and his followers believed that the new vision helped develop a new special awareness in the surrounding world, in which shapes are cleared of unnecessary details, and new tangential and cross-sectional phenomena between the color shapes emerge. At our exhibition, we encourage the visitors to experience the new looking by performing Mikhail Matushin's visual exercises. Seeing everything simultaneously, seeing with the back of the head, the crown of the head, and even with the footprints. The title of the exhibition is a kind of homage to Sigma Polkis Atanova, presented by him at the German Pavilion of Venus Biennale in the 1986. This project represented a radical experience of the author removal from the artwork. In Polkis project, the German Pavilion at the Venus Biennale, an architectural monument of the Third Reich, was painted from the inside with thermal paint, what changed color and intensity depending on the number of people inside the pavilion and their activity. Being put in the historical context, Polkis Atano is an experience of overcoming the trauma of totalitarianism through a protest against domination of vision. Following this concept, we can say that today the viewer's body becomes an atano, a vessel where different ingredients and media are mixed, and the process of perceiving art becomes a kind of alchemy, transforming each individual. How a person experiences this alchemy depends on the individual cognitive, taste-related and physical sensations. Nowadays, both viewers and artists are not satisfied with distant optical contacts thus forcing the museums, galleries and public spaces to search a new forms for this contact. And we are still at the beginning of this journey.